Hi everyone. I am so excited to be with you today. We are going to have such a fun conversation. Uh, it's so good to see y'all on this Saturday. Hi. Hi, Imani. So many folks joining really quickly. So we are going to be joined today with the amazing, the real T.S. Madison. I am so excited. We're going to talk about her career, what's going on in her life, um, and her new TV show is coming out. So I'm just getting us a little caption now here. They need to make this easier on IG Live, I swear. Uh, and then I'm going to bring her in here because I already see her trying to join. Hi, Raquel. Is it, is it my phone? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes. Perfect. So that means nobody heard in the beginning. No, um, I was li I was watching. I heard you in the beginning. I did. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I am so glad to be on here with you. You are such a light, such an icon in our community and the Black trans community, but in the Black community, honey, in the LGBTQ community, amongst women. Wait, amongst did you, wait, Raquel, did you say in the Black community too? Yes. <laughs> yes. I feel like your, your presence is like, has been like the gateway for a lot of like Black cis people who, you know, and Black straight people who, didn't really have other connections for us, you know? And yes. so we were a gateway into a lot of those early discussions almost a decade ago, right? Like you've yes. been in this game and this digital game for a while. Yeah, for a long time. Yes. Yeah. How you so, doing? How you doing today? You know I love you, girl. Uh, I love you too. I'm doing <laughs> well. I'm doing well. Um, I, I'm just trying to pin this comment here. They got to make this IG Live process easier they do they need to i don't know they need to yeah there it is there we go i see it the pin there we go yes hey okay. so give me like a quick update just on your life and then we gonna jump right into talking about this amazing show that's coming in um currently right now i'm just um i'm just gearing myself up uh i have been working on this project for a few years now this it, this mm. this this is this just didn't just pop up today um this has been going on for a few years um uh even before this has been going on even before the original queen's court remember the original queen's court of course <laughs> right so this this situation has been going on even be even before then um and uh, it's just now, like, you know, the, the fruits of my labor have, are, are starting to, to sprout up. And so I'm getting ready to do a little harvest soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited about this situation because this, this gives, I want to say this right. Um, this is the first Black trans reality show head, head led by a black trans woman you know um and it's a lot of weight on my back with that so you know like when laverne came out like i i get it i understand like you know how much weight was on her back with representation and stuff like that because when she first came out she had her um makeover show the uh it was called um you're right. I should know this too. Yeah, the, the show was called like listen, Laverne it's is a, Laverne is, me. Laverne is transform me. Right. Mm -hmm. Laverne is a big, you know, she's a big figure in our community. So, you know, but we didn't get an opportunity to dig into Laverne's life. Like we didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to dig into it and get, you know, we just saw her coming as 
Laverne, the actress, the star, you know, we, we, we see, but now these people get a chance to dig into my life. Yeah. Um, and, and so this is definitely a big, uh, this is a big weight for me because I'm not like everybody else. You're not. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm vulgar. <laughs> no, I'm just being real. I'm, I'm openly vulgar. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm unorthodox in my, in my walk as a trans woman. Um, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but you know what's so funny is I don't even think that, that that is uncommon in our community. There are, when you know the girl, there are the girls who are open, who are vulgar, as you said it, and all of these different things. What's different about you? Well, you've been what, able to what, what, that into a large platform and well, still be authentic. Well, yeah, but the difference with 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 me and 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 them is that you know, I I commanded you to know this about me. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us have been like, because I've always been loud, loud, and in color, girl, always. I've always been loud, loud, and in color. Even but I have, I have commanded them to look at me, like look at me and listen to me. Lots of times, girls don't have the opportunity to have, you know, a platform as large as I as I have, and mm -hmm. you know, there was one point, Raquel, that I was like, oh, <laughs> girl, I got to watch all the shit that I, you know, that I got to watch all the shit I say, and it's really not easy when you when you're used to you know what I'm saying <laughs> and so now I just have to occupy a space of alright Madison you know you gotta realize that um, you got a whole uh, squad of people that you that they're gonna be looking at you and comparing other people like you too and I, this is why I, I have to openly say when I'm occupying any space I, 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 I'm, I speak for me and I speak for unapologetic girls and, you know, loud, loud, and colored girls, you know, because there are a lot of girls that, you know, they, they're stealth or they have that, that stealth um, demeanor. Mm -hmm. Bitch, when I walk in the room, you're going to know I'm in that motherfucking room. That's just how that's going to go. Absolutely. And I'm going to command you to respect me. I'm not going to think that you're going to respect me. I'm going to command you to do that from the door. Right. And that's what's so beautiful about you, because I, I mean, I remember those days, I think around the time that you were, um, your platform was really growing, what it was like, it really was before, like, I think that viral video, right, in 2013, like, you know, Wikipedia, and like, I think other people are like, that was her moment. But like, us in community, like, we knew you from years before that. Yes. Um, And so when you were coming up, I mean, I was like, I was in journalism school and I was like trying to figure out how I was going to have a career. I didn't even know if it was possible. And I think seeing people like you, I mean, really it was like you and maybe a few other folks, like there was like what, like Amaya Scott, mm -hmm. like Amaya, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, we saw the images and IG was her thing. Um, but with you, you had Facebook. You were doing, like, lives before there was lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was. I was going live on my Facebook before people even knew, um, you know, that you could go live on Facebook. And then, you know, I was on um, uh, YouTube, uh, like, right around the time Funky Dineva was on live YouTube. Yeah. And, um, but I wasn't as big as Funky Dineva, but I was talking a bunch of shit. You know, mm -hmm. it was me, Chi Chi, my, my, my gay daughter, Chi Chi. Um, we, they, we would be just riding around with a camera following, you know, us, Miss Eve, God rest my best friend. So, mm -hmm. um, we were riding around, we would just do everyday things. Like, so this, what's going on in my life right now, like on, on a television level, this, this is, this ain't new to me. This true to me, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just now it's in a space where I got to behave a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean, what does that feel like for you? I'm, 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 I'm adjusting. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm adjusting to it. I have to be honest, like, cause you know, when I sit down and talk with people, 
um, about my life. I, I'm trying to be as honest as I can. Uh, that's really new for me because I'm like, I'm not like, bitch, you can't control me, you know? And it's not about me being controlled. It's about me under, like really putting my space and my mind into understanding like, girl, they only let a certain few through, girl. Mm -hmm. Do your, do, do, do your job. Right. Do what you were called to do. This is not all about you. This is bigger than you. And and that's just what I have to put in my brain. Like this, this whole thing is bigger than you. This is bigger than you. So you got to take the critiques, you know, and take the lesson and just be like, girl, but I, but, but don't get it twisted. <laughs> right. Anybody that get in the bed with me, they know what the hell they're getting in the bed for. You know, that goes from network TV to anybody. You know what you're getting in the bed with when you get in the bed with me. Right. You know? I mean, and that that's the other thing, too. I think what has been so refreshing for you is, like, this this change in your work. I mean, first of all, nobody can say that you haven't always been a career woman a boss bitch, honey, for real, you know, and mm -hmm. I appreciate that you don't run from your past, um, that you embrace it, and I, especially the the work in sex work, right, because now we're in a time where everyone talks about sex work a little bit more than they did before, mm -hmm. everybody out here trying, you know, trying to have a little OnlyFans moment, honey, yes, Um, and we're in a new era, but you were embracing all of your story at once and it's so beautiful as a black trans woman mm -hmm. to have seen your journey in that way well here's the thing i i embrace this uh so much because it is my authentic story mm -hmm. um, i occupied a space that i really did not want to and people need to understand that a lot of girls that are in in sex work or um into anything that's secular Nine out of ten times, they don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be there. But when you are in that position, you know, you got to make lemons out of lemonade. And that's just what it is. Like, you know, and so for me, I'm very vocal about it because that's where I was. That's not who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. And people try to uh, chain you down to your past, but they can't hold that against me. And I speak for lots of girls, even girls who are, who are occupying bigger spaces than me have had some taste of that lifestyle. Some taste, not all, all not, not, all, not as deep as I was in it, but they have had some taste or they probably experienced these things now um, in the space that they walk in because you, 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 you communicate with gentlemen now in different spaces and they still objectify you. Mm -hmm. They still solicit you. They still, so it's not like the, it's not like something that we can escape, you know. So yeah. why not tell a story from a trans person who was dealt these cards, who openly played the game and openly showed the girls, okay, well, this is this is the this is the deck that I was dealt. These are the cards I'm gonna play, and while I'm playing this game, I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna give you girls the game. You feel me? Right. Like, own your shit. Like, own, who, own, own what it is that, that you're doing. You know, don't work for them. Work for yourself. Make your money because your black skin is beautiful. Your brown skin is beautiful. Your transness is beautiful. You know, all of this stuff is beautiful. And I, I would rather me capitalize off of me than someone else. Yeah. And hence we are in the phase of OnlyFans. <laughs> right <laughs> right so it is she paved the way for people who didn't even know she was paving the way for them to be honest. I, I didn't know yeah. i didn't know and, and and this is the thing when you have a when you have a destiny or you have a calling you really don't see it until it really until stuff start unfolding you're like wait you know like because i really wasn't paying any of the stuff any attention i just was going through this through this world trying to make my money and trying to make my living. I didn't want to be on the streets. I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't, I didn't, it's just things that I didn't want to be. And so I just was doing me. And sometimes doing you 
is bigger than you. You know, Raquel, doing you was bigger than you. Look at the spaces that you occupy now. Like, you are a voice for so many girls. Like, like listen, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have gotten, you know, into the Out magazine. Like, you, you fought for me for that. You fought for me for that because you understood, you know, the, the spaces that I've carved out for girls. You understood the legacy that, I, that I've made just by being me, you know. And me out here grinding being me inspired you to be who you are. And we were in two totally different fields. Right. But, but the field that you occupy, you were able to uplift me and say, hey, you know, she might not be, you know, the cookie cutter, but she's she's our community. She's really what she's 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 a beacon in our community, you know, for showing girls to hustle, whether it's sex work, whether it's it's a craft, whether it's whatever skill, whatever whatever God gave you, whatever gift you were given, to hustle and and be a boss in your own right. Mm -hmm. Like she this is what she represents for the girls. You know, don't just get stuck on 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 you know, where she started. Like, look at where she's going. Right. And, and here we are today, sitting right here, you doing a whole interview on me. We talk about my television show, girl. Television. So let's get into that. So I be before I forget, because I, I want to say this a few times so people have the details, it premieres on March 4th. Yes. At, on WeTV. Yes. At 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. Mm-hmm. Period. We're going to say it a few times so people know. Yes. But Executive produced by me. See. <laughs> yes. I, I, I am an executive producer on the show. Um, Tiffany New York Pollard is an executive producer on the show. Um, uh, it's also executive produced by World of Wonder Production, who also produces RuPaul's Drag Race mm -hmm. and Million Dollar Listing. Um, and we TV, like you know, um, people need to understand that. Well, that I walked in into this situation not as talent, but I walked in in this situation as I'm a brand. This is what I'd like to partner up with you guys to do, and this is what we're going to do. And when we do this the staff that I'd like for you to hire are black, brown, women, LBGT. I need this because, you know, now I'm in a position to ask for things for my people, you know? Yeah. And so this is what I want to make, wanted to make my show happen. Um, it took a minute because I didn't know that in the industry that it was that uh, difficult for, um, you know, I didn't know it was that difficult for black people. I didn't know. Like in the production industry, I didn't know. So I asked for black producers. I asked for, you know, uh, black and brown producers. I asked for black and brown staff around me. I yeah. asked for these things because I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that it gives a, the, the aesthetic of, of Black people, the aesthetic of gay people, of trans people. I, I needed this. You know, I see Janet Mock uh, writing for Pose. We need that. Yeah. We need our people. We need people in there to tell our stories and to tell, you know, our stuff uh, uh, correctly. When I look at little bits and pieces of the show, because I haven't seen my whole show yet, because I'm, I'm really excited to see it. Okay. But when I looked at little bits and pieces of my show, I saw how beautifully my skin looked with the lighting, how, how it was, you know, how the story was told, how it was laid together, you know, and I was like, God, my people, my people are awesome. You know what I'm saying? It just made me like, my people are awesome. Like, could you just imagine if the story was being told by somebody or, or a group of people, you know, who didn't know me or, mm -hmm. you know, put it in the hands of straight white people. Right. The story could go all zigzaggy. Mm -hmm. 
you know, or I could look funny. I could look, you know, the narrative could have went some some type of way, you know. Yeah. I just it was it was so important for me the representation before we even started the project. So that's why I had to. I, 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 it was important for me to 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 lay those rules down first. World of Wonder and I have a great relationship. Um, RuPaul has been a a, a a great person to he's he's been a RuPaul has been like a goddess to me and it's, he's, okay. he's been a person that I've that I seen as representation when I was growing growing up that I, that I saw that I would have never thought that I would be working with RuPaul or even be working with the people who helped build RuPaul's career you know like it was just it was just so amazing, which brings me back. And I'm, I know I'm rambling, but I'm trying to get it out. Good, you're good. Which brings me back to, you know, you could be living your life and your life is not, like, for you. It's for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like, Ru, RuPaul's whole existence up there, watching him, why I turn to the left? I didn't know that what he was building was a part of my foundation as well. I just know that I was at home watching TV saying one day I would I would like to meet this person you know yeah. then then World of Wonder stepped into my life I've been working with World of Wonder for such a long time I remember the very first time when RuPaul came downstairs while I was shooting something at WOW uh, I think it was a, one of my wait a minutes or something I was shoot something or I did something with Alyssa and she came downstairs and she she just spoke into my life and was just like girl you're a star and I know when people watch Drag Race, and a lot of the drag girls say to her, "Well, you know, you're you're a big inspiration to me." Like that meant a lot to me, you know, because I've always known that my career is never gonna be just ground level. You know what I'm saying? I always knew that, but just this, it's just amazing, Raquel. Like, and and th this is how you know that manifestation is real you know that speaking positively is real you know that uh god is a real thing you know whether you whether whether you manifest god as the universe or buddha or allah or the ancestors or the orisha whatever it is that you manifest the, the higher power as it's it's real because i spoke these things I, I spoke it and it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen a year. It didn't happen five years. It happened. It took a decade, but it, it happened. But it was happening throughout the years. It was working. And it was building up. Yeah. So, I mean, what can we expect to learn about your journey? Um, I think people are going to see that I find out lots about myself on the on the show because because I haven't really seen the show. Like I don't know which direction because we filmed a lot, girl. Are I you got a nervous lot of... though? Because that's like exciting but a little scary. <laughs> yes, I am. But I do know that being with World of Wonder, who is LBGT, I do know that they are not trying to do anything against me. Right. So yeah. I know that they have that. I know that they're not going to try to build me in a space uh, to to uh, to present me to a larger audience in the heterosexual world and uh, defame me or demean me as a trans person. Or I know that they, I know for a fact that they have my best. They got my back, and I know honestly that We TV does as well. Like We TV is like we're not going. This is our. This is our first transgender star. We're not finna paint her out into being this. Because won't our community come after them? Oh, baby, they know what they'll get. They know. Oh, they know. And they're not going to, they, I just don't, I just feel like that they know that this, this is something groundbreaking breaking for the network. Like the network has never had a uh, LBGT like main star. Like I'm their first, I'm the I'm the first star over there like that. So I know that they're putting a lot of their, they're putting good vibes, good energy, you know, good 
you know, good intentions it with it. Now, will there be a little mess on the show? Yes. Gotta be. Will there be a little mess on the show? Yes. Will will there be arguments? Will there be fighting? No, there will be no fighting because I'm not doing any fighting. I'm 43 years old and I am not going to be at 43 on TV punching a bitch, throwing throwing glasses and bottles, busting nobody over the head. Like I'm not doing that. Like I didn't I that's not the reason why I wanted to be on television. That's not what what that's not why I wanted to occupy that space. So mm -hmm. I was not gonna even agree to no stuff like that. But I will read and we will read and we will get we will get to the point, you know, because there was some stuff I was like, bitch, you know, but I, I learn about myself on the show. Like the show was a lot of therapy for me. I found out that I'm not always right. <laughs> what? I look to me, Miss Maddie, always right, honey. Right, me too. <laughs> but I found out that I'm not always right. I also, I also found found out lots of things, you know, about my mother. You know things that my mother that I was like, oh my god, my mother has went through lots of things, you know. Because as as a trans person, when we go through our situations, we are we're we're really going through this, and we're really we're in this transition. We feel alone. Yeah. But what does our parents feel? Right. When you a alienate them, you know from that from your life that's alone so there's lots of things that i learned you yeah. know from my mother and my mother listen if you don't know nothing about god you're gonna learn it on the t.s madison experience because baby miss mary's gonna miss mary's gonna bust that scripture down to the ground you know right. um now also, how do you feel about being on tv oh miss mary uh miss mary is very miss mary loves the lord right and she's very, very protective of how her image is about God and the way that she loves God and the way that, you know, she's a representation of, of her faith and of God. Mm -hmm. and, and she's already said that, you know, she don't really want to be depicted as like a Bible thumper and all that stuff. Or she don't, she's not going to do anything that's against God um, or speaking against God. She's not going to do any of that stuff. But what we will find out in this whole situation with Miss Mary on the show, I, what I think, like I'm, I'm hoping, because like I've been mean, like, well, they've been asking me a lot of questions in this green screen, so I, maybe this is the way it's gonna go. <laughs> so we've been asking these questions. So okay, all right. But uh, we we see her going through this whole experience. This is why we call it the T. S. Madison experience because everybody's having a a T. Even T. S. Madison is having a T.S. Madison experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm learning about myself. I'm learning about the people around me. And I am showing the world that all we as trans people really want to do is exactly what every other human being wants to do. Right. That's win. That's survive. That's, that's go after our goals and dreams and aspirations. Like, listen, I don't want you to give me a pass because I'm trans. Like, Bitch, I want you to give me the job because I'm qualified. All right. You're I just happen to be trans. Who was brilliant. Yes. I just happen to be trans. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, well, because you're trans, you can't get the job. No, because I'm trans, girl, you know, that, don't, that shouldn't be the reason why I get the job. I should get the job because I can do the job. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I want to still show people in this world, even though back then I turned it upside down, honey, <laughs> on the beat, but I, but but the world is still like a beat to me. This is still a beat. Like I still have to turn it upside down in this, Raquel. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm out here in this in this in this hard streets of mainstream, trying to get into mainstream now, and I still got the I got to hustle in this. Uber and hustle. Yes. Yeah. And you all, you do so much. I mean, you've been hustling. Like, you got Maddie in the morning popping off. You got yes. had all the, the different shows, the Queen Supreme. 
the Queen Supreme, Supreme Court. Court, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love it. So I think what I also love about you is you are so um, entertaining and inspirational at the same time, alone, and when you have the right guests. And so I know, obviously, we don't see some of New York on the show. Yes, yes. A little bit. Are there other guests we can we we can know about? At oh, the honey, you know, you might get a little pop up of a, of a fave here or a pop up of a fave there. You oh. know, um, uh, we're we're definitely going to be tackling some issues on the show. Um, like, listen, I'm telling you, Raquel, I've I've only seen bits and pieces, and I do know. I do know that when I'm doing the green screen and I'm, I'm, and I'm listening to some of the questions, I'm like, hmm, where y'all going with this? Any motherfucker, wherever you going, but this is how I feel about it, you know? Uh, the show is going to be funny. Yeah. It's going to be funny because we had so much fun filming it. We cried a little bit. We cried. We laughed a lot. We learned a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff we learned. Stuff that, that made me really sit back at the table and be like, was I doing that for real? Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. that. So we get to see a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. A lot. It sounds like some healing moments, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. We read too. And you going you gonna see some motherfucker reading on there. We ain't gonna get around that. It's gonna be some reading going on in that bit. Cause there ain't gonna be no queens on the show without no reading. Right. And we may get up to the point where we almost we almost, but we ain't doing that on TV, but we all do just shit. Don't try me. Ain't that how we do? We, we <laughs> up and down and 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 you know, we can tussle and then come back and the be all up on each other in our community. I love it. Yes, yes. Are you excited for it, Raquel? I'm excited because I'm excited to see a different side of your life. Like I've, it's been beautiful to meet you um, in different spaces. Like the first time we met, I was I was like a baby. I was I was such a baby. Um, and I think it was like 2015. It was at Atlanta Pride. I think we were at the Quad. Is that yeah? Is that Damn, girl, that was that was. I was working, honey, huh? Yeah, you were yeah. working, but you were like VIP, honey. So y'all, you like come through. I think it was like uh, that was the night I met so many of the girls. Yeah, I, it was me, Amaya, Amaya. It was me, Amaya, Shauna Brooks, Sydney Star, uh, Our Tiffany Monroe. Okay. What's her name? She used to go by the bar, like she was the Barbie, the black Barbie. Oh, uh, a Louboutin Barbie? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Carmen. Uh, it was a bunch of us. Like, girl, I was, baby, but I got out there and rocked that building, though. <laughs> baby, when they gave me that microphone, see, and this is how I know, like, even though I was amongst lots of great trans women in that room, I know who I am, bitch. <laughs> that microphone came in my hand. I rocked that whole room. That room, we had, I had that bitch rocking. It is because that's who I am. Like, you know, I command the, I command my, my I have a commanding presence. Mm -hmm. Rock that room, girl. We had a good time that night, baby. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. It was a, um, I had blue hair. I, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, I had blue hair. Girl, we rocked that motherfucking thing, girl. I had a good time. I felt so good to be around all my sisters and stuff in there. Like, you know, we was, we were getting along. For a little while. Well, you know how I be. For a little while, you know, but we was getting along and, you know, I ain't got no beef with nobody. shit. I just try to come in there and do my job and I rocked that room. We had a good ass time. I, I throw me back a couple of uh, 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 <laughs> Bacardi's, girl. You right. know, and I did, we did meet. We was hugging. We did. And you were, y'all were going to this like VIP area and you were like, come on, girl. Yeah, it the, the, it was like the sweetest thing because I was a baby. I was like, oh my god, these are the girls you see all over social media and everything. And that it was just such a moment of kindness and softness. 
that I, I've always carried with me. So but thank that's you. me, though. Like, I was like, girl, come on here. Yeah, it's in the VIP. Bring your ass on, girl. <laughs> but that's just me. Like, that's just, like, I don't ever, I've never felt like that I was above anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never felt, I'm not into that elitism shit. Like, when you got to be, well, where, 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 you know, you got the only, you have to have this amount of followers and you need to have these amount of people and you got to, you know, I don't believe in none of that shit. Girl, I used to whore for $20. So, bitch, I, ain't above, I don't feel like that I'm above anybody. You get what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I'm not into that. And plus, I feel like when you first meet somebody that you like on the computer or, or somebody that has touched your heart, like, it would have crushed me if Rue treated me some type of way. It would have crushed my heart. Yeah. Especially somebody that I looked at like, wow, I love this person. You know, uh, I love this person and this person has has by by him living his life has inspired my and now we're into this space where he's really breathing into my life really breathing into my career like Rue could have told where I world wanted oh girl it's only one bitch and it's only one diva in this house and you know he could have did that but it was very girl you a star here yeah. how you go you know yeah and it would have crushed me if she would have gave Mm. Or, or hey, cause you you we've been we've experienced it, Raquel. Yeah, yeah. I try not to be that way, I, I, cause I have resting bitch face. So I I be worried sometimes. Like people are like, mm. Raquel, you know I don't even play that shit. <laughs> you know those girls know if they gonna do that, they better just not even occupy it, cause I eat they ass up. Right. Remember, remember, we was at the the out uh, the out thing. I remember. Listen, all they did was pass me the microphone. I tore the room up, didn't it? You did. <laughs> I wasn't even scheduled to do that. They passed me the microphone. I turned the mood. The mood. The whole mood changed in the room. Mm -hmm. It changed you because it was, that was that that was that commanding presence. Yeah. Girl, that that damn microphone. I said, all right, right y'all up in this motherfucker. We hear loud, loud, and in color. You know, it is just everybody just like the vibe changed. Right. You know, and I had such a good time. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't for you, and I'll say this loud on any 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 mountain, if it wasn't for you advocating for me to be in those spaces, I wouldn't have occupied those spaces. Mm. And my goal in my rise to superstardom, because I'm already a motherfucking star, but my goal when I rise to superstardom is when I occupy these spaces or when I kick the door in or, or crack it. See, I'm not looking for you to have, I'm not into that elitism shit. You ain't got to have the best track record. Bitch, you could be a, you could be a, you could be whatever you, the fuck you was, but what you are now is what I look at. Right. Not where, not, 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 not where you come from. Because I was, I've always been held back because of where I come from, mm -hmm. and it takes girls like you, people like Wow, RuPaul, Lee Daniels, Nicki Minaj. I know, right? <laughs> you know, Jason you Lee. That, you were on her uh, Queen Radio. Yeah, Jason Lee. Like, all these people who occupy these massive spaces to say, hey, come on in. Right. Come on in. Like, I appreciate all of those, all of that stuff. I appreciate it. Somebody to come in right. Hyundai BBB Ashata. That's right. Praise him. <laughs> I appreciate all of those things that the people have done for me. Like, come on, dog. Like, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, that was big. And I was telling Joe Button that she want me to be her correspondent for her show. And Joe Button like, I love Madison. Madison, like, I don't even have to introduce myself to these people who, who when I walk into the room. Like, I don't have to introduce myself. It's like, oh, we know who you is, girl. Yeah. I just did Pierre's podcast. I Pierre's know. I can't wait. That oh, girl. Now, listen, it's a mess, so get ready. Uh, I mean, I love it. Girl, it's a mess. Now, you're going to hear some shit on there that I said that you're going to be like, girl, master, they're going to get you. But uh, it's a mess. But we have fun. <laughs> I, I loved everybody. 
I loved everybody in the in in the room. Like everybody treated me like 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 really good. Um, I was able to be free. Like I like occupying uh, spaces where I could be free because the 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 way that we're we will be able as trans people, as LBGT people, as Black people, mm -hmm. the way that we'll be able to, you know, teach is we have to make the, the environment comfortable to teach in, you know? Now, that don't mean that you're going to let them disrespect you because I lays the rules down on top. Honey, it's she, her, and hers. Anybody in here got a problem with she, her, hers? Anybody? Because I can lead this bitch. I'm not trying to change your views, but when you when we occupy each other's presence, you will respect me or we won't have no conversation. Right. That's just how that's going to go. You know, so everybody was there. All right, we good, we good. All right, let's talk. And that's the thing about you, though. I mean, it's always been clear to me through all the different mediums and, and formats and shows that you use. You're, you're being your authentic self, but it's very clear that there is a power there to shift culture. Yes. And, and to not not like normalize us, right? Cause we, but for us to just show up and be ourselves, you know, and be as extraordinary as we are. Yes. As black trans women, black trans folks. And I've always appreciated that. Girl, listen, I say this, I keep saying Nicki Minaj because it's so important. Girl, Nicki Minaj you hit me up in there with all of them niggas. <laughs> It was so many rappers in there. It was like it was it was but I didn't feel uncomfortable. Like it was the it was the commanding of respect. It was she respected me, she commanded them to respect me. I commanded them to respect me. Cause you a grown woman, honey. I commanded them to respect me, she commanded and we had a good time. She and I had a very good time and I and I and I love her because her love for me is a genuine love. And I, I, I love for each other is a genuine love. Like, and I'm I'm so sad that 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 her father was was killed just recently. I'm so, oh, so I, yeah, he was killed by a hit and run uh, driver. But they found they got the guy. The driver turned himself in. You know, I was so sad for that. But you know, it's just that, just that, just it just was it just was different respect level that I had for her with stuff like that because I I, I ain't do Queen Radio one. Well, I've done Queen Radio a few times, but she she makes them respect the dog, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. Yes. Women that show up for other women, period. We need cis women to show up for black trans women because we in this together. We yes, we are. And and here's the thing. I know that there's a, a there's a, a, a big disconnect because mm -hmm. of, of of identity. However, when we really dissect it, there are lots of of differences that we share but there are lots of similarities that we we also share you know as trans women and cis black women black trans women and cis black women we, we were both marginalized groups yeah um you know we both got nigga problems right and we come from the same families the same communities that have not always known how to fully show up for us, to fully protect us, to fully affirm us. Listen, let me tell you something. I learned how to be a woman from a woman. I didn't learn how to be a woman from another trans woman. I learned that. Like, I learned how to be a woman from my mother. I learned how to be a woman from my aunt. I learned how to be a woman from my homegirls. Like, hang around my... Girl, how the hell you think I learned how to be a oh. <laughs> My homegirls was sewing. You know, I learned. And listen, I've always protected my girls. Like, like when they've had situations with them dudes, mm -hmm. like that they was messing with. I get it. Like, like this, what this, and when there, when there's that divide between us, because you'll see on my show too, you'll see the connection between me and um, uh, my new girlfriend, which is my manager, Legra. She's okay. my new manager, and we, we you'll yeah, see we that we have a, Thank yeah, we have a that. really good bond with each other. Um, I, I don't know. I, I I'm not gonna give any of the show away, but there's a situation that happened with with she and I. I went to a, a certain place where I don't. I hope this makes the cut, but I went to a place with her, and and, it, and me going to this place with her really helped me see, you know, the differences that we share with each other, but also made me see how we can still love and support each other in those differences. You know, and I love her a lot. I love her lots. 
Yeah. Um, also, my mother is is a. We can't leave out that my mother is a, is a, is a, is a cisgender heterosexual woman who loves God. And our relationship um, is that's my good Judy. Right. That's my good Judy girl. I whoop a, I whoop a stroke on a man if they ever put their hands on my mama, or uh, or if they well she she whoop a stroke on them. <laughs> right. I I love seeing her in the trailer, um, just just laughing and, and just like having such a good time. I'm curious though with the filming. So y'all filmed some of it during the pandemic, right? We, we filmed all of it during the pandemic, and we, we had to be girl. We was getting tested every fucking other day. Like right. we had to get tested every other day, almost like uh, we like thank God. This is how we know that there's favor um, because we didn't have any uh, wait, we had a little oh, that's on the show, we had a little situation, but it was, you'll see it on the show, Yeah. but but God really was favorable in this whole situation They're really favorable um, I want to say this for those people out there that are watching Please. you have to sometimes look around at the little things and see the divine. If, if you get it, mm -hmm. you be going through a lot of stuff. I, I personally, and this is the way I took it. God moved so many different pieces of a puzzle pieces of my life around on 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 my whole time, and I I actually was in the bathroom with 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 the producer David St. John, who I love so much, and I was I stepped back and I said, David, do you not see all the divinity around around this whole situation? Like there were things that we couldn't get clearance for before the pandemic because we started before the pandemic, and then we had to come back during the pandemic, whatever, that we couldn't get clearance for that we did. And that, and that if, if it was, if it wasn't for us having to take that break, we would have missed it. But when we came back off the break, we were able to get, like, it was just so much, so many divine pieces moved around on the table that I just had to say to myself in this whole situation, God, you got it. Mm -hmm. Obviously this is something that you want, you want that to trans to transpire obviously this is a story that you want to be told or this is something that you have had your hands in from the time when I was on that sidewalk back then with my arms folded saying God I just really wish that you give me a job mm -hmm. or God I really wish that you just like can you give me something else to do can you change my direction can you do something else for me? Like, can you open up another door? Like, oh God, can you just let me make enough money to pay the rent in this old apartment that I'm trying to keep up? Yeah. You know, and I, I see somebody in the comments say that they don't believe in God. I get it. I, that's, I get it. And that, that's, you have every right to, to whatever it is that you believe. Mm -hmm. But I believe in divine purpose. I believe in divine, the divine game of chess. Hell, I'll take it even. I'll take take it even a step further. February fifth, twenty eighteen, is when the original Queen's Court dissolved. Mm. Do you know that February fifth, twenty twenty one, is the day? that the trailer, that the Super Tease trailer came out, the extended trailer for my new show. I couldn't have placed that. I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have did any of that. Like October 19, I mean, excuse me, October 19, October 2019 is when we got the green light for the show and it was it was my birthday and and the and the and the uh the production company were the one that sent me flowers they sent for my birthday and i was like thank you october 22nd uh 20 
2020, we were filming my show. Yeah. And I was like, this is, and, and then the network sent me flowers and said, congratulations to our newest star. And it's just like, this, this be the stuff that I sit back and I look at, like, and I want people to, when all shit be going on in their life, I really want people to stand back and just try to find the divine pieces in it. Sometimes it looks very chaotic. It looks very chaotic. But it's really working for your benefit. Yeah. It's really working for your future. It's really working. Like all those nights I was out there, all those bullets that I missed, all those men that could have strangled me, all those people that could have taken my life. My life was spared for me to get down to this place to tell this type of story on this type of platform so that girls in the future, even possibly after I'm gone, will have, well, people will understand like, you know what, maybe we need to we need to hire these girls so we can keep these girls off the street. Maybe we need to put programs in place for girls to work. Maybe we need to 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 give to provide health care for these girls. Maybe we need maybe this is what we need to do because I watched this show where this ex prostitute hooker for trash bag that the people painted me out to be told her story and went through her life trying to be the next Oprah or the next, I don't want to be the next Oprah, really. I want to be the next T.S. Madison. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I want to occupy that space like that Oprah had and in, in influence. So I just really want people to know to just, just take the time and look at all the divine pieces that are placed around. I do it some days when I get up and reflect back over it, I'd be like, God, like, like who would have ever thought? Because in 2018, I went through, it was, it was how do you say the word? Tumultuous? Tumultuous. Yeah. Tumultuous. I got you, girl. Don't worry. I went through this. Yeah. I, I, people hated me. People, people, you know, I still, like, it's, it's a lot of them. People are still out there with the fuck shit, but it, it, it you can't touch me at this point because you know I see the divine in it. You was just a part of the process. Um, I look and I see these things, and I'm like, God, because people don't know that behind the scenes of that, like that shit was bothering me. It was getting on my nerves, you know, because people tried to paint me out to be a thief. They tried to paint me out to be, you know, uh, all the thing, uh, all the things that they paint trains people out to be but I was dealing with that in the public. Yeah. All these articles written about me, um a misogynist, uh, uh a hater of black women, like all of these these things that was created against me, these narratives that were created against me to tear down my character or to try to destroy my reputation. Um you know, when I sit back and look at it at the time that I was going through that I was just like oh my god this is this is this is some bullshit then fast forward um internal breakups with people who were close to me you know um uh, on their tirades of you know you know when you're going through that stuff at the moment it's awful but if you step outside of that space and you really look at it and you see you can dog you can literally if you knew the things that i knew that i really can't even share on the line you okay. see the pieces it's like that like i can i can look and see them moving like this was moved that was moved this didn't happen because, and I always wonder why, well, why didn't this happen? Why didn't this? Why, 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 why? And we always got them questions. Right. But the answers are in the small divine pieces. Mm -hmm. We just got to look at them. And nobody knows your experience like you do. And that that is powerful 
and beautiful, but I want to thank you for sharing so much of your life with so many of us, so many different types of people over the years. And now we get to see it in a whole new space, a whole new package on network television. Honey. Yep. <laughs> the T.S. Yes. Madison experience. March the 4th, honey, Thursday night at 10 p.m. on WeTV. And girl, we had to put it in 10 because baby, we cuss. <laughs> I love it. I, 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 well, thank you. I mean, we've covered so much, and I know there's so much more. I can't wait till we out of this. Everyone keeps saying panorama, this Panera. So I, so I can see you, give you a big hug. I'm going to be watching. I'm so excited. I know a lot of people in the audience love you i mean th i love my people listen even the ones that be trying to hate girl we do it this is for you girl right this is for you this is for you i'm black i'm a black person i'm a trans person mm -hmm. I, I fall under the lbgt under the gay community like all of the things like i'm all of this i'm all pieces of you whether you want to want to uh, like it or not i'm all pieces of you whether you hate it or not all of the things girl this is the winter season for us. This ain't just for me. This for us, girl. Right. This I, is for us. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing space with me today. Girl, you know I love you, girl. All you got to do is call me, you know. You know of that. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and we always see each other in the unlikeliest of places. It just, like, happens. And we have a good time. <laughs> All right. I love you, Raquel. Thank you so much for having me, honey. And listen, if you write an article, write all this shit in there, <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> an in-depth profile. Please. And use all the explored explorers, whatever the fuck it is, honey. Use all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love you, girl. We did it, Joe. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Well, I love you. Care. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye baby. Yes. Daughter, get this so I can put this on the YouTube. <laughs> I got you. I'm going to save it. Don't All worry. right. Okay. <laughs> okay bye. <laughs>